Greetings everyone, this is Captain Strangelive, back from the dead. Actually, summertime is a very busy period for me, so I'm going to try to keep up with the videos as best as I can. You may recall a while back I did a video on my EC comic books that I never actually completed. So uh, I'm going to do that now, and possibly there might be a couple more videos. And then when I'm done with the EC comic books, I'm going to uh, showcase the uh, 200 or so... Uh, non-EC publishers of uh, horror comics from the 40s and the 50s. But I'm going to get through these first, and uh, there's some that are non-horror titles in here, but since everything's in alphabetical order, I'm just going to go through the whole thing right away in a little ambience. And the first up is The Haunt of Fear number 21. This is uh, from uh, 1953 uh, with a Graham Ingalls cover. And more often than not, he would be signing his name, not Graham Ingalls, but Ghastly. You can see it right underneath the Crypt Keeper there. What's unusual about this comic book is the fact that this is a uh, double cover. The uh, outside cover is uh, in very good plus condition, and then the inside is in very fine plus condition. And here is the... Uh, First page, nice off-white, the cream pages, and this is a uh, microchamber filtering paper. To, it absorbs the contaminants. The same kind of paper that is used by CGC when they encapsulate their comics. Next up is issue number two of *The Land of the Lost*. Yes, this is an EC comic book with artwork by Olive Bailey, and this was based on the uh, radio show. A very popular radio show in the 1940s about this little girl and boy who have adventures in an undersea kingdom with a wise old bespectacled fish called the Red Lantern. Hmm. Next, I have Mad Magazine and VG Plus from 1955, number 22. Next is Mad Magazine. Mad Mega Comic Magazine, number uh, number 12 from 1954. This has an interesting parody of uh, Archie Comics' uh, Jughead and Archie called Starchy. If you look close, you can see uh, Jughead and Archie going into He Has No Principles office. They're both smoking cigarettes. Down here you have uh, Mr. Weatherby Chasing, chasing Betty and Veronica, largely breasted Betty and Veronica. And let me uh, turn the page here and uh, some interesting uh, pages. Here we have Betty and Veronica. And just take a look at their faces. Nothing else, just look at their faces. Quite a bit of acne there, I would say. Hmm and quite a bit of something else also. Uh, next, I want to turn the page and show you what it's notorious for. This... Uh, it's not on that page, it's on the other page here. This comic is notorious for, this, for these nudity panels of uh, Reggie, who is called Wedgie in this parody. And uh, right there you can see Wedgie buck naked getting into a car with Archie and Jughead laughing. This is a great uh, parody of uh, Archie comics called Starchy. If you can ever get a hold of that story, I would do it. You laugh your butt off. Uh, next is Mad Magazine number 8. Next is Piracy Number no. 1 with a story by Al Williamson called Harpooned. Now I have Shock Suspense Stories number 14. Uh, this was used in the uh, Senate investigation hearings into juvenile delinquency. It has a notorious Ku Klux Klan story in there. It has uh, what is even more notorious for a story about. Uh, uh, a little ten-year-old girl who murders her father and then frames her mother and her mother's boyfriend for the murder and they get arrested, are sent to prison, and then they are condemned to death in the electric chair. And the little girl lives happily ever after. 
unbelievable story. Makes you wonder if EC, how much EC contributed to cutting their own throat with stories like that. <laughs> Next, this is the uh, only Frank uh, Frazetta story that he did for EC Comics. This is uh, Shock Suspense number 13 from 1954. He did a story in here called Squeeze Play. A brilliant retribution story, and uh, I'm going to see if I can show you some of the artwork, Frank Frazetta artwork in here. There it is. Now, take a look at all the dialogue. This seven-page story by Frank Frazetta will probably take you as long to read as two comic books, modern comic books that are being published today. That's how much uh, you would get. All in color for a dime. A lot of stuff to read. Next is uh, Shock Suspense Stories, number seven. Oh, uh, Felstein, of course, uh, is the writer, and he is also the artist of the uh, cover, cover artist. This is a story in here called A Small Assassin, which is adapted by from Ray from a Ray Bradbury story. But this is famous for the uh, melting face struck by lightning cover. I also have another copy of that. You can see it better when it's not in the uh, mylar. And uh, this is signed by Al Feldstein. And it was signed by him at the uh, 2008 San Diego Comic Con. And there's a picture of Al Feldstein at this 2008 San Diego Comic Con, and here is the comic that he signed. Next and last, I have Shock Suspense Stories number four from 1952. And uh, this has artwork by Jack Kamen and Wally Wood in it and others, and it was used in Seduction of the Innocent, a book that was published, an anti-comic book book that was published by uh, or written by uh, Frederick Wortham and uh, yep uh, there's a Jack Davis story in here and another st uh, story in uh, artwork by uh, Joe Orlando others so yeah that is it for right now and um, this is Captain Strange Life signing off and uh, tune in again next time. Thanks for tuning in. Uh